والله يدعو إلى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء إلى صراط مستقيم Just like Lekha Shuk. Okay, next one, Brother Abdullah from the United Arab Emirates. Brother, you're live on Oscar. Your questions, please. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Wa alaikum assalam. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay, I have a couple of questions. Okay, carry on. The first one is, I'm a new Muslim, always. Okay. I'm a new Muslim, always. I'm a new Muslim, always. I'm a new Muslim, 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 I'm a new this guy on the peace TV called um, Dr. Um, Dr. Zakia Naik. Mm-hmm. Because, um, during his program, he answered most of my questions. Mashallah. Mm-hmm. Mashallah. So my question is, Sheikh, I got a couple of answers. The first one is, <coughs> what should I be focused on now I'm a Muslim? What should be my, my pinpoint or my focus point? Mm-hmm. And then my second question is, <coughs> Sheikh, I know we are poor. I'm a sinner because I've broke the covenant with Allah before. I was worshipping mm. other God besides Allah. Mm-hmm. And I also I was doing a lot of bad stuff. Mm-hmm. That was all before Islam, right? That was all before Islam, yeah. What about now? Um, alhamdulillah, I'm trying to I'm trying to talk. Although I found it difficult to check, mm-hmm. I can't lie to Allah. Because Allah is the all-knower, mm-hmm. is the all-seer of everything. Mm-hmm. Sorry. So, so. I'm, try, I'm trying my best. But I've got a friend, I've got a friend of mine, so he, uh, he's a known, he's eight years anyway, he doesn't believe in God. Mm. So he was telling me, what's the difference? Anyway, we, we're all, we're not perfect. Mm. Anyway, at the, at, the, at the end of sin, you're making a mistake. Mm. And then you, you break the covenant. So what's the difference between the believers and the, the non-believers. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Jazakallah khair, Brother Abdullah from the United Arab Emirates. Let's tackle this, inshaAllah, yes. now. Okay, we'll do that. Actually. We'll go to that question straight away, Sheikh. Um, let me just repeat that question. Somebody who's a new Muslim, Sheikh. Uh, the first question they want to ask is, what to focus on now? I mean, where to get started? We've entered Islam, mashallah. We've come from the darkness to the light, and we're really excited. We've got a lot of energy. We want to study. We want to learn. What do we focus on, Sheikh? In the beginning, let me shed some light in your heart and in the hearts of the viewers and those who are thinking of accepting Islam and studying Islam for years now. Amr ibn al-As is one of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa He was of the Meccans and he was not a Muslim. And when he came to accept Islam, he sat with the Prophet ﷺ and the Prophet peace be upon him stretched out his hand in order to accept the Pledge of Allegiance from him. But Amr ibn al-As pulled back his hand and said, O Messenger of Allah, um, not before you promise me. He said, with what? He said, I was a big time sinner. I've committed countless sins. Uh, do you see any similarity? Do you notice that he was always stating the same statement of yours? That I've committed every bad thing? Yes. And you have to promise me that Allah, your God, and my God is going to forgive me my sins before I accept Islam, or otherwise, what difference does it make? Now we're going to answer also the second question That's of right. the atheist as well. What difference does it make? The Prophet ﷺ smiled and said, Ya Amr, don't you know that Al-Islam yajubbu ma qabla? Don't you know that Islam erases whatever sins were committed before that? Mm-hmm. The greatest sin ever is disbelief. He did not recognize the oneness of Allah. He did not recognize His Lordship. He did not even worship because he did not recognize His Lordship. So when you repented from this biggest sin, now that erases whatever sins were committed along with that. Mm-hmm. Shall I shed some more light and give you the best news ever? This process of deleting your history, your past, does not include the good deeds. So the process of deleting and reformatting your system Mm -hmm. is only limited to the bad areas in your life. The bad deeds and the sins and the mistakes which you committed. But the good ones, uh, feeding your pet, being kind to your neighbor, working hard, uh, being generous, giving in a charity, even though you were a non-Muslim, all of that is still stated. Mm-hmm. And it counts in the record of your good deed. 
Basically, when an atheist is an atheist, he does not believe in God because he does not believe and he does not want to believe in the hereafter. Mm-hmm. He cannot imagine that after he will die, he will be resurrected once again, then he will be questioned. And he's trying to act deaf and blind. I spoke to somebody once who decided to be an atheist. So he was running away from me. I said, let's talk. He said, let's talk about anything but not religion. I said, why not? He's an educated person. He said, because you're convincing. I said, well, so you know that I'm convincing is not because I'm intelligent, but I'm saying what makes sense. So if you spend some time with this person based on logical proof from the Quran, logical proof from the Quran, especially Surah Ibrahim, Shatter Ibrahim, uh, uh, I believe it is the 14th chapter of the Quran in order. Go ahead and recite it and c- conclude beautiful verses that you can give them as a gift to that person. I bet you, if he is a fair person, he cannot resist their effect. So this is number one. My advice to you and to every person, whether a non-Muslim who reverted to Islam, or a Muslim who is a sinner, then he repented from a sin. The very first thing you need to do is to distance yourself from the bad company, mm-hmm. from sinners, from disbelievers. You're still very fragile. It's like you're a glass who's just taken it out of the oven. It's been shaped wonderfully. But if anybody touched it, it will leave a fingerprint on it. We need to leave it until it is dried up and it is hard and solid until your iman is fixed and firm. You're still very fragile. You need to learn more and more and more. Your heart is very soft right now. So what do you do? Surround yourself with a good company. Go to the masjid as the imam that I'm a new Muslim. I need to learn about Islam. I need to meet Muslim people, strong people. Have all your questions in writing and ask him or uh, whoever is available to answer them and learn. Education, especially the religious education, is the key to success. Through education, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتَوِ الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Say, are they equal? Are they even those who know and those who are ignorant? Those who don't know? So we have to raise the level of our religious knowledge. The awareness of Allah, who is He? You fairly accepted Islam and you fairly were introduced to this deen. Who is Allah? What are his traits? So studying Tawheed and Aqeedah in the beginning is the priority and it is the most important thing that every person who is new to Islam should do. Distance yourself from the bad company, from people who are messed up and people who do not make sense. Learn, acquire education. And I would like to support this with an incident, with an incident that the man who killed 99 people then he completed his century with a monk and he killed a hundred. Then he went to a scholar and he said, I have not done any good thing in my life. I have not done any good thing in my life. I only killed a hundred people. Is there any way that Allah will forgive me my sins? So the scholar, who is a true scholar, who is fully aware of the traits, the beautiful traits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, said, indeed, Allah is the oft forgiving, the most merciful. Allah will never reject you as long as you came to Him sincerely in your life before death, before the sun rises from the west. So he advised him, but to prove that you are sincere in your tawbah, in your repentance, make sure that you're going to move from the neighborhood, from the city or the town, which you committed all these sins. Why? Because those people who did not stop you, that means they applauded whatever you were doing. They did not mind. That means they themselves are wicked and corrupt. Stay away from them. Stay away from them. Distance yourself from the bad company. As-sahibu sahib. Al-mar'u ala deeni khalil. Fal-yanzu ahadukum man yukhalil. At one time, at one time, inshallah you will be able to pull that person to Islam, to guidance, but not now. You are still fragile. You need to strengthen your iman first. So this person who murdered 100 people now responded. And he packed up and he was leaving. Remember? He did not do any good thing in his life. He killed a hundred persons. And now, as he was leaving, once he sat out, he died. Once he sat out, he died. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent both troops, the angels of mercy and the angels of punishment, they disputed. The angels of fire wanted to take his soul to fire. And the angels of mercy wanted to take his soul to al-Jannah. And the dispute was as follows. 
Malaikat al-Rahma said, he repented. So that means all his previous sins are gone, erased. And But he did not do any good thing. No, yes, he did. What did he do? He destined himself from the bad people. He decided to move, just deciding to move, and carrying out this mission, starting to move, was sufficient to save him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him. We discussed this hadith repeatedly. And he entered paradise. Through what? Through sincere intention. Through tawbah and through distancing himself from the bad people. So my advice to you is find a good company to surround you in order to strengthen your iman.